Hey and welcome to another editing tutorial. In this video, we will go from this image to this one. My goal for this session is to kind of try and edit like Max Rife. He's one of my favorite landscape photographers and he has a very unique editing style. This involves some very heavy amount of split toning with dark blue shadows and very warm highlights. Also, this includes a lot of dodging and burning. So for all of this, I will use Lightroom for the basic raw adjustments and then switch over to Photoshop for those final adjustments. So without much more talking, let's go. Here we are in Lightroom with our base image. Also, if you want to follow along, of course, you can find the raw file in the description of the video. Now, first off, of course, I want to go through the basic tab. And here I'm changing the profile to Adobe Neutral. This will give me a very low contrast image to work with. By the way, if you don't have neutral in this list right here, you just need to hit the browse button and under the Adobe Raw profiles, you should be able to find Adobe neutral as well. So with the profile set up, I'm also going to change the white balance to auto. This will give us some more natural color tones to work with. In this case, I quite like the results. Now let's work on the exposure. Looking at this gram, we can see we do have a little bit of an exposure and a lot of room for the highlights. I want to change that, so let's bring up the highlights. And I'm also bringing down the shadows for a lot more contrast. Then we can further work on the brightness by bringing up the whites. Okay, that looks good. And I might even want to increase the blacks just so we have some details in the very darkest parts of the image. All right, looking good so far. Then I do want to make this image look a little clearer, so I'm using texture for that. And I'm also using some clarity here. I think this looks good. Then we want this image to be very well saturated, so let's pump up the vibrance. Perfect. And that's our image after those base adjustments. You can see we did make it a little less colorful at the moment, but the exposure looks much, much better and it goes in the right direction to emulate that Max Rife look. So let's continue by doing some masking. Uh, let me see. I do think I want to work on the upper part first and introduce some bright spot just above the clouds. For that reason, I'm using a radial gradient Let's make it rather big like this and I'm making sure the center lies outside of the image. So the highest part of the radial filter is still inside the image. And of course, I'm also placing it just above the clouds. And in here, I'm going to increase the blacks, which will add some nice subtle glow. And I'm also going to drop the dehaze, which will further improve this effect. All right, that looks really, really good. Then let's add another radial filter right away. This time I'm making it rather small and very thin, just like that. And again, I'm placing it somewhere here. With this one, I want to bring up the exposure. And I also want to bring up the blacks and drop the dehaze some more. This will overexpose the area, but I'm doing this on purpose to have a very bright spot up there in the sky. Also, I do want to introduce some colors in here, so I'm going to push the temperature, making this small area just a little warmer. Perfect. Then let's see. We could enchant the sky some more by using a linear gradient, just like that maybe. And in here I want to bring down the exposure. And thus, I'm making the very top part a little darker. Okay, maybe we need to rotate it a bit like this. But that looks good. Finally, I do want to add a radial gradient to the foreground. Just for those nice bright flowers in here. And for them, I do want to push the highlights. I also want to push the whites, adding some brightness in this area. Then bring up the clarity to make them pop. And maybe let's add some saturation as well. All right, that looks really, really good. That's it for the masking stuff. Now let's take a look at the color grading. And this is where it 
kind of gets tricky because Max Rife has some very unique colors in his images, but I do have a basic idea of what I want to do here. So first off, let me start in the hue tab by dropping the yellow hue just to make those yellow tones a little warmer. I'm also going to drop the green hue. I'm dropping it quite a bit. And this is a very subtle change, mostly in this area right there in the shadows. Next up in the saturation tab, I'm bringing up the orange saturation as well as the yellow saturation and maybe even the green saturation. Okay. And finally, I also do want to raise the blues. Just like that. Perfect. Finally, let's switch into the luminance tab. And in here, I'm going to bring up the yellow luminance, which will just make the flowers in the foreground a little brighter. Let's not overdo it. Just a little bit like this. All right. Then let's head into the split toning. And here is where the biggest change will happen, I guess. Let's start with the highlights. Looking at the images of Max Rife, he always has those very saturated warm highlights against the rather cold shadows. So this means I do want to add a warm color tone to the highlights, of course, almost in the red range and really raise the saturation. And you can see it immediately has this unique look to it. So that's really good. Let's jump into the shadows and use a blue color tone. Just like that. And now this will mostly affect those darker areas, of course. Let's also pump up the saturation. Usually I wouldn't go this high with the shadows, but in this case, it does make a lot of sense to emulate that special look. Okay, looks good to me. And finally, I want to switch down into the calibration tab. Here, I'm bringing down the blue primary hue and I'm also raising the saturation. Perfect. So again, let's compare to before. You can see the colors look really, really good already. We do have a lot more details in the shadows as well, so that's looking good. I don't think we need to do any more raw adjustments, so maybe we could sharpen this image a little bit, bring down the radius, increase the detail, add some masking and introduce some more sharpening. So that's it for the Lightroom adjustments. Let's switch over to Photoshop and finish this image. So first, of course, I do want to clean it up. Therefore, I'm using the spot healing brush and I just want to get rid of a few things here. I don't think there are any sensor spots, but let's check anyway. Also, there's a weird thing down here at the bottom. And I guess this little stone right there is a bit distracting. All right. Next up, I do want to start with the dodging. For the dodging and burning, I'm using the TK panel plugin since this allows me to target specific luminance ranges. In this case, I want to target the brighter area right here on the cliff side. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay and open up the TK panel to choose a luminosity mask. I do think this belongs to the midtones. So let's check the midtones to see if we can nicely target this area. This might be a bit too much, but the second midtones will be useful. So let's apply this as a layer mask on our overlay layer, grab the brush tool, and also let's lower the brush opacity to not overdo it. And I'm using white as the foreground color. Then I'm just painting in some brightness here. I can also just paint a little on the foreground to give the flowers some more brightness as well. Just like that. Let's turn off this layer for a moment so you can see the difference. It's a rather subtle change, but adding multiple of those layers will get us the results we want. So let's just add another layer again. Use the overlay blending mode and let's see. I think I'm using the midtones too again and with the brush just painting in more brightness. You can also work on the center part here. All right, that looks good. So at this point, we might start to lose some colors in here because we are dodging with the white. I can fix that by using another overlay layer. Again, use the midtones to luminosity mask on it 
and then just paint in with a slightly warmer color tone like this and thus introduce some more warmth to this area. Perfect. At this point I do want to manipulate the landscape itself a little bit. Since I don't want to work destructively like I usually do, I'm going to merge every layer here into one single layer without deleting them. Again, therefore I'm just using the TK panel plugin which has this neat little button here called Merge Visible and by pushing it we just get a new layer with everything combined in it. So first off we can see the horizon isn't really straight. So let's drag down a guideline from the ruler up here. Let's hit Ctrl T to bring up the transformation. Right click and choose Warp. Now I do want to bring up the sides to get a straight horizon just like this all right and let's get rid of the guide next up i do want to apply some perspective warp so let's go to edit perspective warp with this tool we first need to create a grid so i'm creating one for the sky then one for the center part right here and one for the center part at the bottom and one for the foreground so with this grid, I do want to make this area a little bigger. Let's hit warp up here. Then I'm holding down the shift key and click on the line up here. Then just drag it up slightly. I also want to do the same on the upper part. So I'm again hitting the shift key and drag up this area. And maybe let's work on the foreground as well by making it a little smaller. Perfect, let's apply it like this. Let me turn off this layer so you can see the difference. This way we have made the center part a little more dramatic and the whole image is just better filled with the landscape, which is the important part of this shot. Alright, next up let's add some more glow to the sky. Therefore I'm using a new layer and this time use the hard light blending mode. Again, use the brush with a very warm color tone maybe like this and here it's important to bring down the brush opacity because this effect is very very strong let's adjust the brush size a bit and i'm just painting in some glow in here all right i think that's enough i really don't want to overdo it okay next up i do want to apply some burning again we will use a new layer with the overlay blending mode then switch over to the TK panel plugin. And here I'm going for the shadows, of course, since I want to make things a little darker. I think the Dark Stew mask looks pretty good, so let's apply it as a layer mask. And again, grab the brush tool. But this time we will set the blending mode to black. Or actually, maybe even a dark blue tone like this. And raise the opacity of the brush. And now let's just make a few areas a little darker here. Just be careful to not overdo it as always. But that's looking really, really good. Okay, I think that's enough burning for now. Then I do want to continue dodging a few areas because I still think especially this part and this part could use some more highlights. So again, let's create a new layer and switch the blending go to overlay, switch over to the TK panel plugin. This time I think I might want to go with the lights mask. Probably lights one, add as a layer mask and use a warm bright foreground color and start painting over this area. Okay, we could give those bright spots some more color tones. So again, new layer, overlay blending mode. But however, we want to have a very saturated orange tone, just like that. And again, use the lights one mask and start painting over it. So just giving the spot some more orange to fit the sunrise colors. We're almost done, but I do want to do some kind of more split toning. For this reason, I am using the photo filter adjustment layer right here. And I'm not changing anything since this will just make the whole image warmer. But of course, I only want it to be on the highlights. This means I'm making use of the TK panel plugin again. And let's see, on 
That's too much. That's better. But I think I'm going with the third slide mask. So apply this one as a layer mask on the photo filter. Now if I turn it off you can see what happens. We get way warmer highlights. We can of course also increase the density to improve this effect. But this looks really really good. Now we can do the same with the shadows of course. So again let's apply a photo filter. And I'm going with the cooling filter 82 because it, this has a nice blue tone to it. And since we only want to have it on the shadows, we are looking for a dark mask right here. Let's see, that should work quite good. All right, again, we could bring up the density a notch, not too much though, but that's looking really good. And I guess here we have the final image. Of course, there's a lot to be done to get the exact Max Rife look, but I think this is pretty close. It's very important to note that Max Rife is working with world-class base images. He always has the best conditions for his images, like fog, a beautiful sunset or sunrise in the mountains. Usually, he does place a person somewhere in the image to get some sense of scale to his images. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions about editing, let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.